Hey everybody, this is Will Dogga, Ableton Live Certified Trainer and Founder of From Studio to Stage. I'm super excited today to walk you through every single feature of Ableton Live 11. Who knows how long this video will be by the end of it. Uh, I will mention I'm going to not do a deep dive on everything, but I want to try to cover every feature. There'll be a few I go into a, a little bit further than normal, uh, but I'm going to be doing deep dive uh, videos of each individual feature of Ableton Live 11 starting this week until the public launch of Ableton Live 11. So stick around for that. Also check out the timestamps in the description so that you can jump to a specific section if you want to. And finally, before we dig in, um, I have a free gift for you just for watching this to say thanks. In order to get that, check out the link in the description. Uh, I've got a couple free things that are gonna help you learn Ableton Live uh, uh, 11 way faster and get started with some great sounds for Ableton Live 11. So check the link in the description for that. Okay. Let's get to it. You up for it? I'm up for it. First thing I want to talk about is the brand new take recording and comping feature in Ableton Live 11. This is probably the biggest feature, uh, most requested feature of Ableton Live. I've joked and said before, I don't think Ableton will ever get it, but we've got it. And boy, is it awesome. So let's dig in. Uh, again, I'll do some deep dives of this. Um, released today, the same day I released this video, is a deep dive into comping. So check that out if you want to go deeper. But let me show you how this works. So what I'm going to do is enable my metronome. I'm going to pick a tempo uh, a little slower than 120 BPM. I've got my guitar connected. Okay, that's kind of my sound. That's the vibe I've got going for right now. Uh, and what I want to do is just record to this click. Uh, and let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Okay, so not bad. I want to do another take of this though. And so what I want to do is show you what take recording looks like in Ableton Live 11. So I'm going to right click on this track and I'm going to enable show take lanes. And immediately you see we have this new take lane down here. Now watch what happens when I hit record again. I'm going to play this part again and let's try and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so you see that new part gets added to an additional take lane. Uh, the first part doesn't go away. It gets captured as an additional take. Now, again, I check out the deep dive and comping for a little bit more. I could also loop record. I could also punch in and out, and it's going to capture that. And this works just as well for MIDI. I can comp MIDI parts or do take recording for MIDI parts. Now, let me show you how to actually comp this part. So I have these two individual takes. Now I could uh, go and click on this take right here, press T to audition this to hear it. Uh, go to this one, press T to hear that. But I'm just gonna kind of willy nilly just select individual parts of this. So let's say um, I like this part of this one, but I wanna take this part of this one. So I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna hit enter, and that's gonna uh, move that selection to what's called the clip lane, which is up here. Let's say I like this part of this one, okay like this of that, right? So now when I press play, okay, you can hear it's kind of splicing all those together. And what I'm hearing is all those individual takes that I selected that's kind of spliced together uh, and put together that I comped those parts, uh, which is really, really great. Now there's some other really cool features like I could select this particular section here, press command uh, to and move my arrow key up and down. I could draw uh, individual sections in if I wanted to to select them using draw mode um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to hitting enter a lot of really really cool functionality with uh, again comping and take recording in Ableton Live and again it's worth mentioning I can do this with MIDI I can do this with audio and then I can also do this with video uh, and you can even use comping as kind of a sound design tool by creating a track let me show you what that looks like just really quickly uh, again, I said I want to do a deep dive, and I'm this is about as deep as I'm going to go. So I'm going to create my audio track. Uh, I'm going to insert a couple take lanes. Okay, when you're doing this, and if you're showing take lanes, make sure you have automation mode disabled so that you don't, um, so that you can actually add all these take lanes and see this content. Um, let me go to clips here, uh, and let's just find, uh, or excuse me, let me go to samples because I want to actually use some samples here. I'm just going to drag in some drum beats. Okay. Uh, I'm going to load each of these underneath each other. Okay. 
and let's just solo this so we hear these by themselves okay uh let's audition this first one okay, take uh, okay great let's hear this one again i'm pressing t to audition these okay so i want to start with this one so i'm going to press enter to commit that to the take lane and then we'll do this kind of breakbeat thing and we'll go back to this and let's select that one um, now let's see what that sounds like so i'm going to solo this and let's listen to this loop oh let's start over at the beginning now. okay uh oh and let's get out of audition there we go so now we can hear this completed loop with all these parts spliced together okay i can also go in and select a section here and if i wanted to reverse that and then add that up to the, the clip length so again i could go so much deeper and do so much more there but that's a way that we could use comping um, just on uh, drum loops to use it as a sound design tool to to build out so so much uh, and do so so many things which is really cool so comping take recording in ableton live 11 uh, greatest feature I think that we've wanted and needed in Ableton Live for quite a while, which is great. Um, now, let me show you uh, another great feature of Live, and that is the idea of uh, linked track editing. That's a hard one to say, uh, but this allows us to, let me put my guitar down for this one. This allows us to link various tracks together to essentially perform edits on one of those tracks, and it's gonna apply to all of them at the same time. So let me show you what this looks like. Over in Ableton Live, I've got a, uh, a stem session pulled up of various stems. And what I want to do, I'm going to just delete a couple of these tracks um, just so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to select all of these tracks and I'm going to right click and do link tracks. And what the link track editing means, I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. When I select one of these, let's say I just want to select this uh, track right here going to automatically select every single one of my tracks the clips and those other tracks when i hit delete it's going to delete all those other clips as well right which is super nice so whatever action i perform to that specific uh track or clip um, it's going to perform to the others and so this is really really beneficial as you're editing content particularly stuff like um uh, uh drum content if you're recording a drum kit and you need to you know, uh, move a hit or edit a hit, uh, move your clip around. It's going to perform that action to every single track, which is really helpful. It's also helpful, I found, uh, when you're doing this with stems for live performance, if you're doing this in kind of a playback context. So what we could do is take this song, what I typically would do is select this, and then I would group it so all my tracks are grouped together. Uh, and then I could right click on that group and do link tracks, right? So now I have all my tracks linked. Uh, and then I could really easily go in and say, okay, let's split this. I'll do command D to split it. Uh, I could select this section, do command option. Oops. Uh, let's do command option F, which is gonna apply a crossfade there. If I wanted to, I could apply a crossfade uh, at the end of that clip if I wanted to. Um, but that's a look at linked track editing. Again, lots of really cool uh, things we could do there. And again, we'll dive deeper uh, in a separate tutorial on how to do that. The next addition to Ableton Live, and I'll admit this one is one that uh, up until about a month ago, I'd heard this term, but I didn't fully understand what it was, how to apply it. But it's the idea or addition of MPE or MIDI polyphonic expression in Ableton Live. Now, what the heck is MIDI polyphonic expression? Again, uh, the best way I've heard it described is think of a guitar again. Uh, if I play a chord on guitar, three notes or in this particular chord I'm playing three notes one five and one or root five and one um, I can pluck every single one of those notes at the same time so we hear the chord together but the cool thing with guitar is as I play that I can slightly bend kind of each one of the notes in the chord just the nature of how guitar works each one of those notes is going to slightly go in and out of pitch a little bit of vibrato on each one of the notes of the chords now if it's really bad it's going to sound out of tune and bad but just naturally, it's going to sound realistic. It's going to sound uh, like a real person playing a real instrument. Um, MPE, MIDI polyphonic Espre expression, allows us to take computer-based music, which tends to be perfect, which tends to be unrealistic if you're not careful, and allows us to add expression into that content. Now, we could use an MPE MIDI controller like the Sensor Morph, the Rolly Seaboard, 
Um, we could use the, uh, what's the Keith McMillan, um, I think it's the Keyboard 4, I believe, is an MPE enabled MIDI controller. And when we play that MIDI controller, each individual note is going to send its own set of uh, pitch data. So as I play the note, I can change the pitch slightly. It can slide. Uh, and that slide can uh, can control various different things kind of based on the software. And then it also has aftertouch, polyphonic aftertouch. Now, I, at the time of recording this, I do not have an MPE enabled MIDI controller. My Sensil Morph will be here in like two or three days. So again, check out the separate video when I talk about how to set up a MPE enabled MIDI controller for that. Um, but you can use push to at least send polyphonic aftertouch. So if I go over to my push, uh, if you go into setup, you now have this brand new icon here or setting here for pressure. By default, it's set to mono. We want to change this to polyphonic aftertouch. And let me show you kind of what this looks like and how we can use this. So over in Ableton Live, uh, what I would suggest, uh, the best way to start to understand this is go to sounds. And there's this brand new section uh, of sounds called NPE sounds. Again, MIDI polyphonic expression sounds. And these are sounds that are kind of preset pre-mapped to show you uh you know how to use mpe and what it can do so i really like this mpe airy pad and sub um so i'm going to pull this up and again i'm using push and so push can only really send polyphonic aftertouch it's not sending slide um or uh, sending uh, individual note pitch bin but it's at least sending polyphonic aftertouch and you can see and get a sense of what that can do and again we'll do a deep dive into M mpe later but really quickly with this sound pulled up uh, what i'm going to actually do is go in here to wavetable and the thing i've enjoyed kind of uh demoing this and seeing i think a good visual of this is to actually watch push so i'm going to play a note and as i push down on the note You'll see the filter move, so kind of that notch point on the filter is going to move. But now, as I add other notes to this, those notes are going to move the notch filter independently of uh, the first one, right? So each one of them is kind of moving that filter independently based on how hard or soft um, I play that note. So that aftertouch that I do after I hit that initial touch, uh, initial uh, note is kind of changing that position. Now, if I go into Ableton Live uh, 11, uh, and I'll mention, uh, so far I've found Wavetable and Sampler are the two best kind of implementations of that, uh, of MPE and Ableton Live at the moment. Uh, so if I go over to Wavetable, you can go to MPE, and you can see there's pressure, there's slide, uh, there's note pitch bend. And again, pressure is essentially polyphonic aftertouch. And I can say, just like we've been able to do with Wavetable before, uh, I can say, okay, I want pressure to control uh, this function. I want pressure to control that function, slide to control this function, uh, and so forth. Uh, a couple devices I want to show you that are really helpful. MIDI effects. One is this MPE control. So if I double click here, it's going to add this MIDI effect. Um, what I can do is basically see kind of what's happening as I'm playing. So again, similar to we looked at that, uh, that auto filter, as I play now, you're going to see the point that gets added as I push down or do aftertouch. You'll see how that goes up. Now as I add a new note, you're going to see that's independent from the first one, and then I add another one that's independent from the previous two. And so that's a good kind of visual indication of the push to is sending that polyphonic aftertouch data. We could also go in and select slide and pitch, which again, when I get my MPE uh, MIDI controller, we'll go and dive a little deeper into that. Uh, but we can set minimum and maximum point. The way I've been thinking about this is it's kind of like the velocity MIDI effect where I can say this is the minimum value, this is the maximum value. There's a couple other settings we could do there to enable. Um, one of the things I want to show you though, is let's take an instrument like uh, operator. Uh, operator is not MPE enabled at the moment. Uh, so let me actually delete this guy and we'll drop operator in there. I'm going to choose just a saw wave here. Okay. So if I play that, that's what we get. And you can see I have this polyphonic aftertouch information that's coming in, um, but it's not really doing anything right now uh, in operator, right? Because operator is not MPE enabled. But I can go to MIDI effects here, take this expression control device, and let's add that in. Uh, and then I want to go to the aftertouch setting here. And this is again polyphonic aftertouch. You can see all those different values lighting up as I play, right? You can see that moving there. 
I'm going to press map and let's map this to uh, let's map this to filter frequency. OK, so now, <coughs> excuse me, with this map, as I play these notes, it's going to open and close the filter. OK, so there's a single note you can see represented here and here and adjusting the frequency. Now let's add in additional notes. Right. And again, using expression control is a really, really useful utility to add uh, essentially MPE uh, flexibility in editing um, uh, functionality to devices that are not MPE enabled, which is really, really cool. So a lot of cool options there. Uh, now, let me take you into, I think, the biggest visual change, one of, I would say, two biggest visual changes in Ableton Live 11, and that is brand new updates to Clip View. And you might think, uh, you know, what is uh, what what is there that's so exciting about Clip View? But there's some really really cool updates to Clip View. And so, um, over in Ableton Live, uh, let's start with a audio clip here. If I double click on a audio clip, that's going to open up Clip View. And uh, there's a lot of the same functionality that we had in previous versions of Live, but things have just kind of been laid out a little differently. First off, you'll see um, here's my clip. Don't worry, follow actions have not been uh, removed. Actually, there's some really cool updates there, but they're now hidden right here. So if we click this fold unfold button, you'll see we get access to follow actions and essentially everything that was initially a part of what was called the launch box, not to be confused with the launch box. So you see all those settings here um, and we can fold and unfold those. Again, we'll talk about follow actions in just a moment. Then we have these additional tabs here that we can select uh, different things. So we have our sample tab, uh, and, and here is basically everything we had before that you're used to seeing. Uh, we can change our pitch by semitone. We have the ability to transpose by sense now uh, to adjust the tuning of things by sense. Uh, and our clip gain is now, instead of a fader, it's basically this kind of setting here. Uh, now to go to this next tab, which is our envelope um, editor tab, uh, I can press option two to get there. I could press option one to get to my sample box or option two to get to envelopes. Uh, this is everything that we had before. So no real updates there uh, to audio stuff. Now let's go to MIDI because boy, are there lots of updates there. So again, we have this uh, notes tab and let me actually jump over here. If I unfold this again, you'll see all of the same options, follow actions, um, everything we've seen before. Again, some cool updates to follow actions. We'll get to in just a moment. I do want to mention though, uh, this right here, there you still have the ability to set program changes. By default, first time I opened this up, I went, what the heck, where are the program changes? Just have to unfold that, and that's in this new section here where we can get to that, right? Uh, if I get back out of this, we have the ability to again start, uh, set our start and end point. This is all stuff we had in Live 10. We do have this brand new scale feature, uh, which is really cool. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. I'm gonna skip over it just for now. Uh, I'll highlight that in just a moment. But again, we have our notes box here. Uh, we have this new randomized functionality that we'll talk about uh, in just a moment, velocity range functionality. But we have these brand new expression editors. So I can click this show hide button to show or hide both of these. You can show or hide velocity and show or hide probability. Now, if you've ever edited velocity in Ableton Live uh, 10 or previous versions, you are going to be very thankful for this new velocity editor. It's way easier to see what you're doing um, and it's just, it's such a better experience than previous versions. Uh, you could click on this, you could type 75, press enter. That's going to take you to an exact value, which is great. Again, I could select the note, still do what I did before and hold command. Um, uh, again, a lot of, uh, really, really useful and helpful kind of features, uh, there in editing velocity. Probability is a brand new feature to Ableton Live 11, uh, that allows us to basically say, um, what are the chances that this note is going to be played? So I could say, uh, you know, around 50% of the time this note will be played, 50% of the time it's not going to be played. This is, again, part of that grand initiative uh, from Ableton to basically add more expression into music. Uh, so we get that with MPE. We get that with probability, with randomize, some cool functions and features like that. So this is one of those particular uh, things that you're going to see throughout Ableton Live 11 as you dig in. So probability, we can uh, select those. I can actually select uh, all of my probability and randomize. So by just pressing that randomize button, it's going to 
throw a random value to probability, um, which could be really, really helpful when you're creating content. One thing um, I mentioned when I uh, did a course for this uh, for from Studio Stage students is just mentioned kind of be careful with what you use the uh, randomize function on and be careful what you enable probability on. So for instance, you might want to enable probability on like uh, the hi-hat part of a drum part, but not your kick and snare because kick and snare is the thing that's got to be solid. It's got to be consistent. Adding it to the hi-hat is probably going to work and it's probably going to be okay, but you just kind of want to be aware of what you're adding, uh, adding that to. But it's a great, again, a great function, uh, a great feature to have. So um, there's our note editor. Again, these are our expression editors that we can show or hide. Then we go into our envelope editor. Uh, this is uh, this is basically essentially the same thing, um, but there's our control chooser, or excuse me, there's our device chooser, and here is our control chooser. Same exact functions we had before. But now we have a new tab, and so if I press option three, that'll take me there, or I can just click there, and that is our expression editor. Uh, and this is all about MPE. So if I go down here, I can hide our expression tab, rather. I can go and hide all these expression editors down here. We get velocity, we get release velocity, but now we get slide and pressure as well too. And so slide again is uh, something you get if you have an MPE MIDI controller. Pressure is polyphonic aftertouch. You can see this is what was recorded by push. Uh, if I go in and let's duplicate this bass part and let's take one of these MPE enabled sounds uh, that I was pulling from earlier. So go up to sounds here and let's take, uh, this is a bass sound, so let's load that in. So now I'm gonna press shift tab to go back to this. Um, I have lots of stuff to edit on individual notes when I do this. And again, I'm just gonna go fairly quickly. We'll do a deep dive in just a moment uh, or over the next couple weeks as we go through this. So I can select an individual note. I can edit the slide, the pressure, the velocity of that individual note. But if I zoom in here, you're going to see I can actually edit the note pitch bin of just that note. So again, that's just the, the pitch of that particular note. Now, if I'm playing a chord, uh, polyphonic chord, you know, multiple notes at the same time. So let's just add another note on top of that. Uh, again, I'm going to have individual pitch control of that from the other things. Uh, I could draw in or adjust just the pressure of that particular note, uh, again, which is really, really cool. Uh, a lot of uh, cool functionality that we have there. Now let's stick in kind of this this world and realm of clip editing uh, and clip view uh, and talk about a few different things. Let's talk about uh, actually editing clips in Ableton Live and some cool stuff we can do there. Um, I'm gonna take these clips over to Arrangement View. So I'm gonna select these three original clips that I have. I'm gonna copy them, I'm gonna paste them over into Arrangement View, and I'm gonna click back to Arrangement to bring uh, those up. Now let's take these two MIDI clips that I have here. Um, I'm gonna select both of them. So I'm gonna hold shift and select both of them. I get this really cool multi-clip editor view um, that just makes it really, really easy to see uh, each of these clips and see them together. And this is the type of content that I think is important to see together because it's uh, a bass part and it's a drum part. So in particular, I wanna make sure the bass part is, is locked in perfectly with those kick drum hits. Um, the rest can kind of go in and out of, uh, of time, can be behind the beat, ahead of the beat. But I want to make sure the bass drum and uh, the kick drum and the bass part are locked in. Uh, so this is a great way to see that. So I see these overlaid uh, kind of on top of each other. You can see the bass part uh, is this kind of purplish color. The drum part is this brownish color. Um, and it makes it really, really super easy to see. So I can press fold now. That makes it even easier to see. We've had fold before. It's really nothing new. Um, but I can press fold to kind of fold to just see the notes that are being used, which is really, really helpful. Um, and I can go in and again, edit each individual note here that's a part of this if I want to um, and make all my changes to velocity, probability, all that sort of stuff. Um, I can click the loop icon to again, select the individual different parts and see that. But one of the things that I think is really, really helpful is this brand new focus mode. Uh, so if I click focus, then what that's gonna allow me to do is to put uh, one of these uh, parts uh, or multiple MIDI uh, clips that I have selected uh, basically into focus. And the way I choose it is by clicking on this loop brace up here. So with focus mode on, loop brace on, I can see the drum part, and then I can go down here and see the bass part. 
So again, I think that's a, a really, really great update to this to uh, basically be able to see um, and edit your clips uh, way, way faster than before, right? And so that's some really cool stuff. Let's talk about keys and scales. You probably never thought you would want to talk about music theory as it relates to Ableton Live, but I think there's some really, really cool updates um, in Ableton Live and Live 11 as it pertains to keys and scales. So what I'm going to do is create a new MIDI track here. I'm going to double click to create a MIDI clip. Now I, I'm in the, the portion right now where I am um, want to decide on kind of a rhythm part for my song. Um, I'm not really sure what key, um, but I know I kind of want to decide on a particular rhythm part. Uh, I can go down here to scale. So brand new functionality in Ableton Live 11 and choose my scale and say, okay, I want to see maybe the key of C uh, and it's going to be C major. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to highlight um, the scales uh, in, in this piano roll. And essentially what that means is I'm going to see every note that is diatonic to the key. That essentially just means every note that's, that's actually a part of the key. I'm going to see that laid out on the piano roll. This makes it super easy uh, to just draw in notes if I'm in draw mode to figure out uh, you know, exactly uh, what notes I want to go where and make sure I'm picking notes that are in the key. Uh, so that's a really, really nice feature that could be really beneficial and helpful as I'm looking at this and trying to figure out uh, the exact key. Now what's cool about this, I, I do have push pulled up again next to me. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the key in Ableton Live. So let me show you where I'm doing this. So again, I'm going to scale. I'm going to choose a new key. Let's go to the key of F. So I'm going to wait to select that just for a moment. Let me show you push. With push plugged in and connected next to me, when I change to the key of F, push is now going to change to the key of F as well too. If I want to go to F Dorian, I'm feeling very jazzy. Um, we're in the key of F. Let's go to scale. Now Dorian is selected. Now what's cool about this is this is bi-directional. So in my clip, I selected the key, the root note, and the scale type. Let's go to push. And again, I can choose a root note and a scale type on push, but let me show you Ableton. Again, I want you to pay attention to this right here. Let's go back to the key of C. Okay, so you see C is selected. Uh, and let's do Mixolydian. So I can go down there to see Mixolydian. Or let's go back to major. And you see by me selecting that on push, it's also going to show up over in Ableton Live. But the fun is not done quite yet <laughs> with key and scale. Again, a lot of great new features to talk about. Um, when I click scale here, this is the same way we have this fold button, which is going to fold to just show us uh, notes that we're using. We now have a fold to scale button. And what that do does is that completely takes away any note that is uh, non-diatonic, that's not a part of the scale naturally. Uh, and so it just makes it really easy, again, one, to learn your scales, and two, to figure out what notes are going to sound good. And again, I, you know, good is, is kind of relative in this sense, because sometimes playing a note, you know, playing a, a B flat in the key of C sounds good as opposed to a B. But in this particular case, um, I can see notes that are diatonic to the key of C and only choose those particular notes, which is really, really helpful. So fold to scale is really beneficial. Now, occasionally you're going to work in a song, you know, maybe you're you're doing a remix of a jazz tune or you're trying to record a, a jazz song and you're going to work in a song that's in B flat. Now, one of my pet peeves with Ableton Live before was everything was sharps. Now, I'm a guitar player, but I like to see sharps as opposed to flats um, or excuse me. I like to see flats as opposed to sharps typically. And so um, what's really, really nice with Live 11 I can choose uh, my root note to be A sharp or B flat, which is an inharmonic equivalent, which is basically means it's the same note, depends on how you spell it, what key you're in. And I can right click over top of uh, our notes here, and I can choose, do I want to see A flat, or excuse me, do I want to see A sharp, so the sharp version of this, or do I want to see B flat? And of course, I want to see B flat. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to see all the notes in the key of B flat. So my accidentals are going to change to reflect that I'm in a flat key. If I right click again, I can actually choose how do I want my accidentals to show up? Accidentals are just basically the notes that either have a sharp or flat essentially is the best way to think of that. Um, do I want them to be automatic based on the key? So if it's a flat key, it's going to show as flats or if it's a sharp key, it's going to show as sharps or I can default it to show sharp. So if you're 
some sort of weird twisted person and you want to be in the key of flat uh, B flat but so but uh, C sharps you could do that you could see sharps and flats so let's get out of scale here you could see sharps and flats if you wanted to uh, or again be a normal person and leave that set to auto uh, which is uh, again one of my favorite new features uh, in Ableton Live 11 now let's start to transition and talk about using Ableton Live 11 for performance there's so much stuff here again I'm gonna do individual videos and breakdowns of this um, but I want to walk you through again the goal of this video is to walk you through every single feature and we'll do deep dives um, kind of uh, for the next few weeks but let's take a look at session view there are so many updates to session view I'm gonna do my best to try to remember them and we're gonna walk you through those now so I've got session view open up uh, one of the first things you're going to notice is the master track over here. So this looks way cleaner than it has in the past. We have this uh, brand new kind of numbering uh, area here. So we have scenes one through eight. This leaves these sections here open uh, to rename kind of whatever I want. So I can do command R to rename. Let's call this A section. I'll press tab. Let's call this B section. So what's really great about this, again, I have the name of the scene. But then I also have the scene number next to this. If I want to get rid of the scene number, I just click and drag over to the right. And now I just have the name. Uh, it really kind of can make the master track clean up a lot by narrowing that down, which is great. So let's bring our scene numbers back. Now, the biggest update, there's, there's quite a few updates to Session View. But one of the biggest changes to Session View or to just the idea of views and windows in Ableton Live in general is a brand new scene view. So this is what scene view looks like. If you double click on a scene, you get this brand new scene view. So you see right here, you can see the name. I can right click on this scene title bar to uh, change the color of a clip if I want to. I can add a tempo, something other than the default. So I could click and drag up or down, or I could actually type in, let's say 95 BPM. Let's make our time signature 2-4 if I wanted to. Now this is the biggest new feature and addition of uh, Ableton Live 11 when it comes to session view. Again, there's a lot of brand new updates to session view, but that is follow actions on scenes. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. I'm, I promise I'm not burying the lead here. We'll get to follow actions on scenes, but I can enable a follow action and basically have live jump between scenes um, you know, based on the, the scene itself. Now, this is a great feature, particularly for live looping performances. I know a lot of people um, or a few people that uh, run tracks in session view and they split up their individual scenes. This is going to make that process easier if you uh, are doing follow actions on scenes. But I think this really becomes handy for people that are doing live looping performances in session view. Again, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about follow actions on scenes in just a moment. I want to keep in session view for just a moment. Now, so I changed the tempo and time signature of this scene in session view. Um, I see it in scene view again, which is our new view, but I don't see this over here in the master track. But if I put my mouse to the left of uh, the track title bar for the master track and drag a little bit further, you know, start to see this brand new tempo field show up and this brand new time signature field show up. The same way I edited uh, this in scene view, I could edit this field here if I wanted to change my time signature if I wanted to. Again, I could type in. Uh, just whatever I want directly if I wanted to uh, and again when I want to get rid of that I can just click and drag over uh, to get rid of that which is uh, really really nice super super handy uh, in session view to make edits and changes um, one other thing I'll show you in uh, in session view uh, that I think is a great new kind of update is the ability to go through let's add just a couple clips here these are just dummy MIDI clips I'm gonna select all of these I'm going to do command R, which is my rename functionality. I'm going to type song okay, I'm going to press enter and I'm going to rename every single one of those clips in session view uh, at the same time, which is super, super nice. And so that makes again, it's a, it's a small functionality. It's a small update, but that allows me to to uh, rename multiple clips at the same time. Now let's dig into follow actions again. Um, I'm just going to do kind of a quick look at this. There's so much here. So much great stuff here, but we'll take a look at this really quickly. Okay, so uh, I have all these clips that I added in. 
I want to add some follow actions to my scenes. So to make this more dramatic, I'm going to just change the tempo of every single one of these scenes to something different. We'll keep most of these in 4-4, but we're going to change the tempo to something completely different. Now I'm going to select each one of uh, my scenes here. I'm going to select all of them at once by selecting the top one, pressing shift and selecting the last one. And I'm going to go over to scene view. I'm going to press follow action and then next. And then I just, for the sake of this, I'm going to say after a measure, I want each of these follow actions to occur. And just the follow action that's going to occur here is next. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to turn on our metronome so that we can hear this. We'll turn it down so it's not too, too loud. And then I'm going to launch my scene. Now, before I do that, I want to show you there's this brand new icon. Basically, whenever you enable a follow action on a scene or a clip, you get this cool little icon that shows you, okay, there's a follow action enabled here. Um, this makes it really, really easy to see, okay, something is going to happen. So now let's launch uh, this scene after a measure. We're going to jump to our next scene and then we're going to jump to our next scene and then we'll jump to our next scene. And we're basically cycling through each of these and enabling each of these uh, after a measure, right? We're just jumping through each of these scenes. We'll get to our final one here and then it jumps us back up to the top. Now, this is really, really great. And again, one of the great uh, pieces, great reasons that uh, follow actions on scenes is there that people are excited about is the ability to basically respect the key uh, or the tempo and time signature of each scene. So you could see as I change throughout that, uh, it changed tempo, it changed time signature to follow along with it, which was uh, super, super nice. So if you've got tempo time signature changes in your song, you wanna slow down for maybe the B section for a solo, speed up for the A section uh, for the intro of your song, your kind of live looping thing. Uh, it's it's possible to do that now I can set all these follow actions but what happens if something goes wrong or I decide in the moment you know what? I want to stay where I am I don't want it to automatically jump to the next section what do I do then so we have this brand new functionality which allows us to enable and disable follow actions globally now this is gonna this is a global change that's so gonna affect both clips and scenes and we'll talk about clips in just a moment a couple of cool things with follow actions there but let's launch this scene up here if for some reason I want to stop what's going on here I want to kill all follow actions then I can click this button uh, and then after I do whatever follow action was selected there it's basically done and it's gonna stay on the currently playing scene which is this one at 112 BPM now that disables follow actions both for scenes or clips um, Let's re-enable it and let's say I don't want to disable follow actions. I just don't want it to go to the next scene selection. So I don't want it to launch the next scene. Now, in order to demo this, the best way to kind of do this is to uh, make this a little bit longer. So I'm going to make my action time actually two measures as opposed to just one. Okay. So I'm going to do that across all my scenes. So now I'm going to launch this scene. Okay. And we'll let it get to the next one. Okay, so here comes our B section. Okay, so now we're in our B section. I'm gonna right click and do cancel scene launch. And doing that basically is gonna leave me on whatever scene is currently selected. So follow actions are still enabled, but it disabled the scene launch for the next scene. Now, you might think that's great. That's really impractical to move my mouse and right click to select those different scenes. Uh, but Ableton has thought of that. They've thought of everything. If we go into MIDI map mode, Command M, we have a brand new functionality here uh, that allows us to basically cancel scene launch by MIDI mapping to that. So you can MIDI map to your MIDI controller here to disable that. You could also MIDI map to enable or disable global uh, follow actions, which is great. Uh, one other thing that's really great with follow actions that's been updated, uh, we have this jump uh, command right that allows us to jump to a specific scene which is really really great so I could say uh, this would be kind of weird but I could say let's take scene one let's have it jump to scene seven okay so after two measures scene one's gonna play okay and then it's gonna jump to scene seven okay so here we go right there so there's scene uh, seven okay which is great so um, that's a cool feature functionality of that um, one other thing I want to show you with clips and follow actions as it pertains to clips is the ability to select multiple clips right click 
and create a follow action chain. And essentially what that means is uh, let me enable all our follow actions there. Okay, so I'm going to select this first clip. And then what's going to happen is uh, because this is set to uh, one measure, uh, this is automatically going to jump to the next scene here, our next clip rather. And this is follow actions on clips. And I'm going to get to the end and it's going to jump up to the top, right? So there's that guy. Now, what's cool about this is this doesn't have to be in order. So I could just randomly select uh, clips like that. I could right click and do create follow action chain. And the same thing's going to happen. So these are going to jump around and it's going to do this in order, which is great. Final thing I want to show you with follow actions on clips. Uh, if I open up this window now, we now have the ability to link follow actions to the clip length. So what this means is as soon as the clip ends, uh, it's going to perform this follow action. Or I can say, hey, play the clip two times. So I can use this follow action multiplier to say play the clip two times. And then after that, do the follow action. So a lot of really, really cool uh, options with follow actions, updates in session view that, again, I think is just really, really stinking cool. Now, I want to take to to talk about what I think is personally my favorite update to Ableton Live 11. I use instrument racks all the time for sound design, for uh, keys, content, and playing live. Again, I think this is probably the coolest feature in addition to Ableton Live 11. So let me take you over here. Um, I'm gonna just pull up just to start a default instrument rack, okay? You'll notice this looks normal at first, and I wanna show my macros okay so I click that and you'll notice we have a, f a few new uh, buttons here a few new functionalities here one we now have the ability to go behind eight macros in Ableton Live and we can add uh, groups of two macros all the way up to 16 macros so as I press plus it's gonna take me up to 16 macros which is really freaking cool if you ever map things to macros you know that having just even one more macro sometimes is all you need. So the ability to go up to 16 is really, really neat. Now I can also go down again in groups of two, go all the way down to the point of getting to one macro. So hopefully your mind is starting to go, oh, I could do a lot of really cool stuff with this. A lot of really, really cool options and functionality. Uh, now let me show you one thing that I think is really, really cool. That the way Ableton has kind of created and designed this. Um, let me actually find a instrument rack uh, that has some things mapped here. So there's a here's a piano instrument rack that I've created. It's a custom instrument. I want to take away macros and get just to the volume right here. So uh, I just basically have a piano volume at this point. What's really nice as I press this plus uh, uh, show macro button to add macros back in, I don't lose those mappings that I had before. Essentially, they're just kind of being folded uh, in. They're being hidden. And then when I press plus or minus, they're being added back in, which is great. So again, if that was the only update to instrument racks, I think that would be worth it. Uh, that'd be an incredible, incredible update. But again, Ableton says we're not going to stop there. We're going to keep going. We've got a lot of great content. So now let me press this button, which is a brand new button we've never seen before. This is called the macro variations button. Uh, this is incredible, incredible new feature of uh, instrument racks. So what macro variations do is they essentially uh, take a snapshot recording of uh, the position of every single one of your macros in your instrument rack. So what I could do for instance is say, okay, this is my default starting place for this piano. So I'm gonna press new. I'm gonna rename this default piano, okay? And then I wanna make a, a macro variation that has the tone turned down, maybe the verb turned up, the decay turned up. Uh, maybe we bring the uh, the volume down for this one and we call this ambient piano. So I'm going to press new and I'm going to call this ambient piano. OK, so now I can launch these macro variations and it's going to change the settings uh, of these settings uh, as I launch this. OK, I can also use my arrow keys up and down and press enter or return to launch these. I can also MIDI map these. So, for instance, one of my favorite things to do is go over to push. And let's say we want to map these three buttons here. I'm going to click on um, the launch. Okay, so launch macro variation. I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to click on up. Okay, and so I've mapped all of those to push. Now if I go 
uh, and just so you see these are where those are mapped um, now if I go back into Ableton Live and disable MIDI map mode I can basically go up and down by pressing those pads and then press uh, the launch button to essentially launch that macro variation which is really really cool and again the possibilities for this are endless I'm gonna do a video diving in um, even deeper to this but again this allows you to save kind of a snapshot of the settings for your macros and there's lots and lots of flexibility to this we can update a macro again I'm trying not to go deep but I'm so excited about this I could go back to this uh, let's go back to ambient piano here I actually want to take this dry volume back to zero so I'm gonna press delete uh, I want to update this now I'm on ambient piano so I'm gonna press that button uh, and that's gonna update this preset to where my volume goes back to zero now there's probably a couple settings when you're changing macros that you don't want to change as you update macro variations and again Ableton has thought of that as well too let's say I want to keep my volume kind of separate from changes and in, in macro variations I want to exclude that from macro variations I can right click and I can choose exclude macro from variations so as I change these um, these uh, macro variations the dry volume is going to stay exactly where it is and that's that's probably uh, you know mapping volume or something like volume is a feature that I probably don't want to change I don't want a drastic change that suddenly takes me from a low volume to a big volume if I'm playing right and I'm changing while I'm playing um, there's some ways you could tweak and use macro variations to basically change presets to keep kind of one default preset and as opposed to duplicating that device into multiple chains and ch using chain selector you could essentially create that one device and then create presets or versions of that device uh, using macro variations again so so much I could talk about there uh, but just not enough time in the day okay next thing I want to talk about is the brand new tempo follower functionality this is a great feature for live performance um, this is something that uh, I have been testing and trying I think it's gonna get better with time much like wine uh, as it ages it will get better um, over time but I want to show you at least how to set this up and give you a basic idea of, uh, of what this looks like and we'll demo this and see how well this works again I've kind of had mixed results in early testing based on the content uh, of what I'm using and trying to uh, sync to tempo kind of depends on the results I get but let's try it and let's see uh, what we can do so first let me take you back over to live I need to set this up so I'm gonna do command comma which is preferences um, I'm gonna go to the link tempo MIDI uh, section here and this is a new kind of name for this and under tempo follower I'm gonna choose and make sure this is set to show so you're gonna see this new functionality show up over here this follow button shows up I need to change what input channel uh, Ableton is going to listen to and essentially what this functionality is is Ableton is going to listen to an audio source hopefully a, a very pronounced clear rhythmic audio source and it's going to try to change the tempo of the live set to match this now I do not think this means you'll never use a click track ever again live uh, I think there's some work to be done to get this feature where it probably needs to be um, but I think it's a great start right and you'll see kind of what I mean now what I'm gonna do for this again I'm gonna use my trusty strat here for this guy this is plugged into input 2 on my interface so what I'm gonna do is in the input channel here I'm gonna select 2 uh, again deep dive on this later uh, but this is defined by whatever interface is selected here in audio input device okay I'm gonna go to an audio track now uh, just so we can hear this I'm gonna select 2 auto and then hit my record enable button okay so there's my guitar uh, I'm gonna enable my metronome and I'm gonna enable follow let's see what happens again sometimes this worked really well sometimes it's, it's kind of interesting so we'll see what kind of results we get okay so I'm gonna play kind of that same riff I was playing before see what happens I'm gonna press play and listen to our metronome now okay so obviously didn't track very well okay uh, let's try this now I'm gonna start my metronome I'm gonna play along with my metronome and adjust my tempo and let's see how well it follows now let's see if I can slow it down Okay, 
Now, one thing I've noticed, again, we'll do a deep dive on this and I'll share some tips and tricks. I've done a little bit of a shootout of uh, my guitar versus listening to a click track versus listening to drums. Again, kind of varying results. Sometimes I've found you have to start play and play. Sometimes you have to stop, uh, you know, transport and have it listen. Let's see if we can try to get it to line up a little better than it, it, it does and see the results we get. Again, I think the starting place that it's at right now, I'm literally recording this the day before Ableton announces the public beta of this. There's a ways to go, I think, until this is really defined. Um, and obviously electric guitar plugged in direct, I don't think is necessarily the best source for this. You know, uh, listening to a hi-hat. When I've used this with drum content, it, it locks in a little better. So, um, you know, to Ableton's credit, I'm not making it easy on them. But let's try kind of starting and stopping transport and see if we can get closer than we've gotten now. So with transport stopped, let's... You can see it's kind of jumping, slowing down now. Let's start their metronome. No, oh, way too slow. Let's see if I can speed it up. All right, well, that did not work as well as I hoped it would, uh, but that's how you set up Tempo Follower. And again, I've had mixed results with this. In fairness to Ableton, uh, at this point, um, I do think it's kind of a first try at this. In fairness to Ableton, using a electric guitar plugged in direct, I don't think is the best possible uh, rhythmic source for this, especially a song that's you know kind of doing this kind of movement. Um, Again, trying it with drums, uh, trying it with uh, just tracking a hi-hat or a drum loop on another machine. I tend to get better results than what I got there, but it's still not perfect. It's still not there yet. So the dream, I think, of uh, using Tempo Follower and never having to use a click, I don't think is fulfilled quite yet, but it's getting there. But at least you know how to set it up. Try it out. Let me know in the comments the results you have. And again, we'll do a deep dive later and you'll see some of the shootouts that I've done. Uh, and we'll see what we get there. Now, really quickly, let's talk about some of the new devices in Ableton Live. Um, I'm not going to talk about how to use them. I'm just going to show you what they are, and then we'll do deep dives into each of those later. Okay, so let's go into audio effects. Uh, one thing you'll notice here in audio effects in the browser, you know, I, I don't know that I love this feature yet. We'll see. Maybe it'll grow on me, maybe you love this, is each of the devices are separated by effect type. So we have drive, dynamics, EQ, filters, modulators, uh, performance, pitch and modulation, time and space utilities. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this. I feel like it takes it, uh, makes it a little slower for me to find what I need, but again, it may work for you. So um, let me show you some of the new features again. If I go into time and space here, we have a brand new reverb, a uh, hybrid reverb. Uh, this is incredible. This is probably my favorite new device in Ableton Live. It sounds incredible. Essentially what it is, is it combines IR or convolution reverb, which are essentially, for lack of a better term, recordings of spaces that you drop in that you can kind of simulate that you're in that space, plus an algorithmic reverb. And the algorithms sound really, really great. Dark hall, quartz, shimmer, tides, prism. Again, we'll, we'll go through these at a later time, kind of do a shootout and show you these. But what I can do is choose different IR uh, types, right? And different IR recordings. You could also, uh, there's a user mode, so you could drag on your own IR recordings if you have it. Um, but you could choose something and say, okay, let's do classic room. You could choose the blend between those two. Uh, choose just algorithm, just IR. Um, a lot of really cool stuff built into hybrid reverb. Again, I'm gonna just jump ahead for the sake of time. Uh, but hybrid reverb is really, really stinking cool. Next, if we go over to pitch and modulation, two new devices as well uh, that are great, two new effects. Spectral, spectral resonator, which is basically a resonator that's going to generate a tone uh, either based on the frequency that you have. Uh, you know, you, you put an instrument here uh, or you add, uh, you know, this on an audio clip and it's going to generate uh, a, a tone based on uh, the frequency knob, or you can have it uh, be generated via MIDI. So I could select you know, MIDI from this particular channel. Uh, let's say MIDI channel one. 
uh, and then you could pass MIDI into this and choose to transpose this, uh, generate a tone, use all the different chorus, wander, granular effects. Uh, this is a really, really cool effect to kind of create particles, almost like granular synthesis, both spectral resonator and spectral time. Kind of have this granular synthesis type vibe that's really, really great for ambient content. So again, just for the sake of time, I'm cranking through this spectral resonator. Spectral time is a brand new effect. Uh, really you know speaking of particles this really brings the particle stuff to real life uh, we can freeze this uh, it's kind of like a delay we can kind of get a reverby type sound and vibe to this uh, we can freeze it choose to freeze it manually or also uh, have it trigger uh, based on a specific note value specific time value if we want uh, which is really really cool a couple updates to devices uh, that are nice and live again we'll do a deep dive on these later Redux has some new features that has been updated uh, that's really, really nice. We have a brand new, um, let's go here, we have a brand new uh, flanger and phaser. Okay, so phaser flanger that has a brand new doubler feature that I love. It sounds amazing on pads. And again, deep dive at a later time where we'll dig into this. The brand new chorus and ensemble is really, really great. The ensemble setting is awesome. Uh, the vibrato, again, sounds awesome on pads. Uh, that's really helpful as well too. A couple devices in live uh, that are not new but just got updates uh, to the UI is Collision. So again, it's really easy to see kind of what you're doing um, as you're doing this. If we go into uh, back into Audio Effects, Corpus has uh, got a new UI update. Uh, basically, the same thing as Collision, essentially that resonator, which is uh, which is great. Again, makes it really easy to see what you're doing. Uh, electric. This, I think, is one of the best UI updates because you see what you're changing uh, essentially as you're doing it. You see what part of the key. So there's the fork, and then here's the damper as you're adjusting that and, uh, and updating it, which, again, I think is really, really great. So that's a look at some of the new and updated devices in Ableton Live 11. Let, let's talk about CPU metering. Now, before you stop the video, I know that may sound like the lamest thing ever, um, you know, maybe surpassed by talking about file management, but CPU management is incredibly, incredibly important when you're a laptop musician, when you perform on stage uh, with your laptop. It's really important that you manage your CPU well. Ableton Live 11 makes that easier than ever. If we go up here in the right hand corner of our screen, you'll see this brand new CPU monitoring uh, section up here. One, when I go to this drop down, I can choose between average or current uh, for my meter. And you can see your average over time or your current CPU usage at all times when you drop down here. And you can choose what you see uh, directly in the program. Do I want to see average? Do I want to see current? That's incredibly, incredibly helpful. But again, Ableton has not stopped there. We have this brand new show hide button, which is going to show individual CPU meters for tracks. This is, you can see what those guys look like there. Um, let me load, let's load, uh, go back to sounds here. Let's go to MPE sounds. As I load these in, watch these CPU meters as they start to kind of light up. And if I double up uh, devices, you'll see this start to get sky high, especially here in a moment. Let's group this and let's add these devices. There we go. Okay, let's add a few of these to, to one thing. As opposed to you hearing them, I just want you to watch this CPU meter. Okay, so I'm going to disable that. Just going to play. Uh, you can see this guy is just pegging the CPU meter uh, hard. And this is really, really helpful, again, as a, as a computer musician. If you have a live set with a lot of content, <coughs> excuse me, a live set with a lot of content, and let's say in particular... Uh, you know, your CPU meter is going crazy or you're having issues. This makes it super easy to get a sense of the, the tracks in your live set that are causing you problems. And you can go back to that and go, oh, the reason this is causing me problems is I have three devices and one instrument, right? Let me spread that out across tracks as opposed to keeping everything in the same place. Uh, again, that's going to be really, really helpful uh, to help you discern and figure out what is causing problems in um, in your set. So that's a great feature. Another great utility and feature is the brand new templates feature uh, in Ableton Live. So if you go to the browser, one of the things you're going to notice is there's a brand new templates section over here to the left. 
there's some great built-in templates to Ableton Live, like the podcast template, um, demo and sketch template, eight track recording template. I can double click to open these templates and they're basically gonna be ready to go. Uh, at any at any moment's notice, it's got kind of preset default things uh, set and loaded. If I open just a new live set, let's say that I want to create kind of my own recording template. So let's have two audio tracks. Let's say I want to go to audio effects here, EQ and filter. And let's say I want to add in a channel EQ uh, to both of these. And then let's say I typically like to add... Um, Let's go down to time and space. Let's say I, I tend to like to add a delay to this return track, which I already have reverb, but let's add that delay. I wanna save this as a template. So what I can do is go up to the file menu, do save live set as template. I'm gonna call this basic recording, okay? Now I'm gonna open a new live set. I don't need to save it, okay? I can go to this template section now, and I now have this basic recording option that's gonna pop up. I can double click it and it's going to load that template. And this is all the settings that I chose just previously. Loading channel EQ, loading that delay in, all of that content is there and ready to go, um, which is great. Now, let's say, let's say that the majority of the time that I use Ableton Live, I'm basically starting with that template. Um, I want to make that the default live set in Ableton Live so that when Live opens, it automatically updates to that basic recording template. Now, We've had the ability for years to set a default live set, but Ableton has made it way easier and way uh, more flexible than ever before now. So over in Ableton Live, I've got this template loaded. Let's say I want to make this template, which is the basic recording template, my default live set. If I want to do that, I can right click on it and I can choose set default live set. You get this nice little icon now that's going to tell you, okay, this is the live set that's going to open by default when you load this in. And now let's open a new live set up. Okay, uh, let's go command N. There we go. So you're going to open a new live set up and you're going to see that default set now is the one that loads. So on channel EQ on both of these tracks, as well as my reverb and delay loaded in. Let's say I want to go back to that default set that I had initially. That is saved as a template. So I can right click, do set default live set, uh, which is right there. And again, that's going to take me back. Now, if I do command N to create a new live set, it's going to take me back to that template. That might seem like a small thing, but it's one of the many small changes that makes a huge difference in Ableton Live. Um, having that templates feature is going to allow you to get to what really matters, which is the creation part getting your ideas out of your head and into Ableton Live way faster um, uh, than just starting with a blank page and having absolutely nothing. So um, that's a look at every brand new feature included in Ableton Live 11. We've gone over an hour. If you've made it this far, wow, more power to you. Thanks for watching. Again, as a reminder, um, I want you to click the link in the description. I have a free gift. Again, kind of is my gift to you for making it all the way to the end of this video. Click the link in the description to check that out uh, to get that free gift. And then, um, like I mentioned, this is a overview of every feature of Ableton Live 11. It's over an hour. What we're going to do is do a deep dive of each one of these individual features um, kind of uh, between now and the time Ableton publicly launches uh, and makes um, Live 11 available. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments. Let me know the features you want to know um, uh, and hear about the most, and we'll prioritize that content. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, make sure to hit subscribe to the channel. Hit that, uh, that bell icon so you get notified when we uh, post new content. But thanks so much for watching. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody.